So thank you all for being here. Uh, and I'd like to start just with one minute each to tell us about what inspired your solution. And so Ram, let's start with you. Yeah. We know that digital technologies over the last 15 years or so has transformed many industries and livelihoods across industries, across uh, sectors. But there is one glaring gap that is there is it has made hardly any difference to a large segment of humanity that is smallholder farmers. And their practices haven't really changed. Their livelihoods really haven't changed over the last many decades. So that was a source of inspiration for us to uh, found Jiva, with, which is a profit for purpose entity. And it has a clear uh, stated mission to uplift smallholder farmer livelihoods at scale using technology. Great, thank you so much. And now we're gonna move over into Ola and Monica. People are at the heart of the HS2, helping people innovate, make informed decisions, and reach all people with healthcare. When we started in 94 in post-apartheid South Africa, our goal was to empower district health managers with digital tools and access to data to achieve equity in health. So what makes DHIS2 special is that we work directly with local stakeholders to develop digital solutions with them based on the reality on the ground. And from the start, we wanted to develop a free and open source solution that was not limited to one country, but one that any country could easily adapt. And to foster a global network where local innovations are shared and used across the world. But software is just part of the solution. Through action research, PhD programs like the one I am currently doing, apprenticeships and hands-on training, we help build human capacity to support sustainable, locally owned information systems. So people aren't just the beneficiaries of DHS2, they are what keeps it going. Helping the digital solution and movement evolve and spread from one country to more than 100. Great, thank you. And Noemi, over to you. Thank you. Dear all, we gathered here today because we all share the same conviction that digital solutions are key to achieving the sustainable digital goals, development goals, of course. In response at BMZ, we have created a portfolio of digital initiatives which focus on three areas. First, advancing digital public goods and infrastructure. Second, fostering fair regulation of the digital economy. And third, promoting digital skills to empower individuals in the digital age. Each area has its opportunities and challenges, but one common requirement determines the success, education. And this is why we have created a Tingi. Thank you so much. And I'd like to get a little bit deeper, Ram. Can you tell us a bit more about the characteristics of your solution and why it's game-changing? Right. So I'll wait for the slides to change, yeah. So there are about uh, 500 million smallholder farmers who grow 70% of the world's food. But the irony is 60% of the people who suffer from food insecurity are the same smallholder farmers. Why is that? That's because 90% of the smallholder farmers have earnings less than the living income of $2. So they have significantly lower income and therefore do not have access to nutritious food, which affects healthy growth. And it's a complex challenge. It's multifaceted. They face several barriers. Lack of access to technology, digital illiteracy, opaque and unfair markets, and access is difficult, and also inability to get credit access in the different cycles of their farming requirements. Now, to solve that, we need a comprehensive single window solution to these farmers. And that's why Jiva is building a 360 degree a unique platform that is a full service platform. Yeah, it's a digital solution that tries to address all the different facets of farming into a single unified interface for the farmer. It is very hard for an average smallholder farmer to be able to uh, access different solutions by multiple service providers, and therefore we are providing a unified cross-cutting farming services platform to these farmers. 
It's a digital platform, so therefore it is built in a scalable way. We offer them uh, access to markets in a transparent and friction-free basis, whether to sell their produce or to buy their inputs. We also offer them credit to be able to buy those inputs for their farming. We also enable them to get credit, uh, enable them to get advisory to be able to farm better. But offering these digital technologies makes it still difficult to access for them. So what we have done to solve for is a second pillar, which is we built a network of thousands of rural entrepreneurs. We recruit them in the villages, so their neighbors, partner, part of the same community that the farmers come from. And they, then they offer that solutions to these farmers and therefore make it accessible to these farmers. We have now worked with 100, 000, over 100,000 farmers in Indonesia where we provide the full sort of services where we've had considerable impact on their income and their livelihoods. We also serve about 8 million farmers in India where we provide agronomy and information advices. We have only started now. We are three years old. So we still are committed to our mission of uplifting smallholder farmer livelihoods at scale using technology. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And Ola and Monica, do you have anything else to add about the characteristics of yours? Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. So to answer it, we have a short video to share with you. My name is Monica Amoha and I support DHIS2 in Uganda. In my country, DHIS2 is used to collect and manage health data for all people and health programs. When a child is vaccinated or someone is tested for tuberculosis or treated for HIV, that information is entered into DHIS2. Driving actions all across the country at every level of the health system. From health workers sending reminders to TB patients to make sure they complete their TB treatment, to program managers monitoring a nationwide vaccination campaign, to the Minister of Health making strategic plans to achieve universal health coverage, or disease surveillance teams working to stop an Ebola outbreak in its tracks. This has been game changing. With paper systems, data collection takes months. With proprietary digital tools, data is locked in silos. DHIS2 is the digital platform we use to bring our health data together in one place to help make timely decisions that improve the health of all our people. DHIS2 has been so successful in health that Uganda has started using it for education management as well. And as a government-wide system to monitor progress towards our national development goals in all sectors. It's been a long journey of digitalization since we introduced DHIS2 in 2011 and we still have more to go. Capturing reliable health data in the hardest to reach areas requires infrastructure, digital literacy, and human resources. But thanks to DHIS2, we already have a digital backbone to build on. And that is just my country. DHIS2 is used across Africa, Asia, the Middle East, and the Americas. We are a global, open-source community working towards sustainable development goals. Using DHIS2 to help improve the health of people around the world. DHIS is the best solution for us. It's a one platform uh, for all the solutions in the health sector. You have the data, you can uh, do whatever you want with it. We can do geographical um, spatial analysis, we can know the hotspots. This is what DHIS2 means to me, endless possibilities. It's just data, but it improves life. That's what makes DHIS2 different. And that's yeah. what makes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's what makes DHIS2 different. It is a flexible and scalable digital public good supporting local ownership and innovation towards good health for all. And DHIS2 is sustainable. Thanks to support from our partners, our software and capacity building program, has supported national health information systems around the world for more than 20 years. We hope to forge new partnerships to support our work, helping countries achieve the SDGs. 
Thank you. I think we all see the, why it's game changing. We couldn't wait to clap. Uh, so going over to Noemi, can you tell us a little bit more about why your solution is game changing? Well, sure. Atingi is an open source digital learning platform. It's entirely free of charge. And what sets Atingi apart is its unique ability to provide users with knowledge mo um, modules tailored to their specific needs and local contexts. Let's hear directly from Cohen, a gig economy worker from Kenya, and learn how Atingi has impacted her journey. on Atingi have shown me the power of education because through them I have learned how to empower women through education, through advocacy, and through community development. Seeking free digital learning? Atingi is your gateway. Over 1,500 courses in 21 languages, bridging education and jobs in emerging markets, empowering over 800,000 users in agriculture, digital skills, health, and more. It's simple, it's educative, it's impactful, and it's applicable. They have taken a complex issue and dissified it into the simple, most understandable language. Atingi offers its platform, content, and support for free to partners. Join our network of over 360 partners and reach 800,000 users worldwide. Start your partner journey at atingi.org today. Whatever you learn there, you will apply it in your life. Anyone at any literacy level can be able to understand and apply them to better themselves. It's accessible from any point of the world. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. You can always get the knowledge that you need. I really liked how Cohen stressed that Atingi takes complex issues and manages to convey them in an easily understandable way. In fact, that perfectly describes the, the, our approach to tackle existing challenges and making quality education accessible to all. We identified three overarching challenges in education, accessibility, ac availability, and relevance. We created a unique set of solutions. Firstly, we employ an open and innovative partnership strategy to extend our reach and enrich our content. This allows us to connect with more users and offer an even more diverse range of courses on a single platform. Secondly, we create content with local partners to align with specific contexts. With much of it being open licensed, it can then be adapted by anyone, anywhere. With decades of experiences in international development cooperation, we at the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development have the advantage that we are able to implement projects like Atingi with the bigger context taken into account. For us, closing the gender gap, we've heard about it today, and tackling accessibility of education are prerequisite for achieving our vision. A world in which digital learning is inclusive, accessible, and secure for all. So, in order to shape a brighter future for all, it is fundamental to have strong partnerships. We rely on the dedication of people like you. And so, we invite you to complement our existing efforts and to join hands with us. We stand ready to exchange on your experiences and ours. And if this presentation has inspired you in any way, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you for listening. Thank you. This has been phenomenal. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for these incredible solutions.